Hey, it's Biddy Penny. I'm here today to make some tags. And I was going to make some, and then I went to the mailbox and I found this magazine in there. It's the October, September, and August, that was backwards, uh, 2020 Somerset Studios. And I was not impressed, but that's okay. It seems to be a year of not being impressed with this magazine. I mean, don't get me wrong, the artists are amazing, but I just don't, the whole weird paper doll thing is not appealing to me. So I try to draw inspiration in other ways. I did like this project. I thought it was pretty cool. And so today for my tags, I did do a little bit of like home inspiration, if you will, plants, windows, that kind of thing. Uh, and so here I'm using scraps on my desk. I have these pre-made tags and they are like two by three and a half, which for me is a little small. Um, if I'm gonna give a handmade tag, I kind of want it to be like the statement piece, <laughs> if you will. So I, the way I remedy this is by adding pattern paper behind it. So I'm gonna layer this up into three layers. So I really liked this paper. Um, I'm sure you saw it in one of my recent videos, which is why it's a scrap piece of paper on my desk. And I'm gonna use it. So one tip if you're using this technique to rough up your edges is use a thicker blade scissor. This thin one tends to rip the paper. Now I know we're like tearing the edges, so that shouldn't matter, right? Still, it is a better overall effect if you use like the Tim Holtz scissors that have like a real thick blade. All right, so I'm bringing in the stamp set. It's my first time to use it. I got it off Etsy for like five bucks and I love it. Um, I know it has a really vintage style, but I don't really do vintage, but I like to use vintage stamps in a modern style. So I'm crazy about this one. And when I say do vintage stamps in a modern style, I basically just use a different kind of color and pattern paper and it makes it more modern to me. So um, I'm making my own pattern paper for this tag and I'm really loving it and I don't wanna cover it up too much. So I'm just playing around here. I end up, because I like this so much, I'm gonna stamp up the tag. Don't wanna leave it white. And um, I'm, you know, I was planning on using that white and yellow paper that you see there by my stamp pad. But I changed my mind because it was just going to be too monochromatic for what I wanted. So I brought in a really beautiful blue and white paper, which I thought was the perfect contrast. So I'm going to cut this down. I'm going to cut it quite a bit smaller so that you can see all three layers and they all get their moment to shine. So I'll trim this down. One thing you'll notice about the way I craft is I don't get overly bothered by measurements. So here I could have measured it more precisely to what I wanted, but I just trimmed off that little extra and I got it to the place I wanted it to be. And for me, that's less fussy in my own head. So a little tip, if you have never made tags before is you don't need anything other than scissors and paper. And when you cut off the first corner, you turn it over and you use it to cut off the second corner and it'll be even. So I hope that helps you. It's nice, you don't need any special dies. Then your tags can be any size you want them to be. And I really, it's a something I use all the time. In fact, I have some Tim Holtz tag dies that I bought, it was like my first set of dies ever in crafting and I never really use them because I just use this technique. All right I took that tag to my sewing machine and went around the edges to adhere all three tags together and when I sew something I like to leave the thread really long. It's like yes this was sewn 
see all the thread hanging off of it. <laughs> I do it. It's my thing. I do it all the time with my journals, tags, cards, everything. So I'm just cleaning up the stamp that was on there. Um, all right, so that one's done, except for the sari silk that I'm gonna put through it, which was like this gorgeous chocolate color. Um, I have every color of the rainbow and of sari silk. And so that one now is done. I thought it was a really elegant card. So the, I wanted three different aesthetics. Um, so this next one is definitely just kind of more trendy or modern and I'm gonna bring in the window die and that is from a Queen and Company uh, kit I don't know if they still make it what it was called I don't know anything about that um, but here are some printables that I have for my junk journaling that I already have printed up um, and so I'm just kind of flipping through here to see if there's anything I wanted to use and I thought maybe these little rabbits would work through the window and that would be really cute but they don't nope didn't work for me no matter which way I moved it <laughs> but you don't know till you try and those rabbits didn't work either no problem instead I grabbed these and this bow paper here well first this is Miss Cogs I didn't actually use this I thought, brought it in because I thought I might but uh, this is a printable off Etsy that I adore. And then that other paper, the black and white one, is from Paper Studio. It's from Hobby Lobby. All right, so I'm just measuring my window so I know how to measure and cut my paper to go in the window. I'm also keep kind of playing with this design because I'm not sure how I feel about it. So you'll see me kind of laid on the tag a number of times just to make sure I'm getting this the way I want it. So again, I'm not measuring, I'm just using my tag as my base. And that's perfect. Now I have this leaf ephemera that I made and I'm popping it in there. It's going to kind of be in the foreground. And then the night sky is in the background is the idea. The only thing is it didn't make sense to have a number two pencil <laughs> tag color, right? If it's a night sky back there. So I use that for my frame instead. And then I'll color, I'll ink blend on the tag a, a deeper, richer, like blue green color. So again, I just have to keep playing with this to make sure this is all going to work for me. Now I actually used a blue ink, but because of the yellow <laughs> on my glass mat that I did not clean off, it became blue green. It's totally fine. Matches the leaf, right? So I just get some color on there. I don't need to color where there's going to be something covering it up. So that's done. And then I believe I will bring in I'll glue everything down and eventually I'm going to bring in some acetate and I'm going to make this window look like it actually has glass in it. Just a little extra touch. There it is. So I do this from time to time when I'm working with the window dies. And you might have seen my um, not too shabby digi challenge um, video if not check it out I did a window slimline card that you might like and I use the same die set just a different set of windows so when I'm doing the acetate I use double-sided tape and I use I'm just using like a eighth inch one here and it just makes it a little easier and I know it's more secure so I have to put the tape on to put the acetate on and then I'll have to put tape on the back of that to adhere my paper. I try to catch the glare there for you so you can get the effect of it.
All right. Moving on. Yep, that works. Just glue it down. And that small tag is done, except for we need to add more to it. So I'm going to bring in another piece of scrap paper. And I love this paper so much. So I'm going to cut this out. Again, I'm going to make it big enough that everything gets to shine, the little tag, the big piece of paper, and then I bring in this doily. And one side is pearlized, but the other side is great. It's um, just like a paper that is easy to ink blend. So I'm going to ink blend on that and get some more contrasting colors. I wanted a pop of color on this card. And this did it for me. So I'm going to turn that paper over and I figured I could use the doily as a stencil. One thing I do try and accomplish is some cohesion between the front and the back. I like them to be completely different, but I still want there to be some sort of, con you know, cohesive connection. So this is a very quick and easy process. Now, I'm not one to waste a doily, so I'm going to cut this in half. And I actually put it kind of catty corner on the tag when I end up gluing it so that you can see more of it and it covers more of the tag front. And then I will adhere the other portion to the back of the tag. I left this in here because I wanted you to see how easy it is to clean up these glass mats. They are amazing. I get frustrated working on any other surface after having worked on this mat for a number of years now. So here it is. I'm going to glue this down. These tags came together pretty quickly. I had to answer like 10 phone calls while trying to make them. <laughs> oh gosh, but um, I would say they came together in like 30 minutes overall, I believe. So not bad, not bad at all. Totally worth it. All right, so I decided I wanted this cream ribbon and I wasn't sure if I wanted to adhere that little tag completely or just put it on with ribbon but because I decided on cream then I wanted to use my distress like gel medium that seals it's a glaze the distress glaze so it'll seal in that distress oxide ink and that way, if it were to get wet or whatever, it just won't get dye all over our sari silk, which is an ivory color. Now, I usually use the, um, the Tim Holtz sponge blender, but I couldn't find it because I have one dedicated to this glaze. And so I ended up using paper towel and I got too much on there and I had to clean it off. like. You'll see that again later. I think I left that in there just to give y'all a little tip. So I'm bringing in a die because I figured I might want to write a person's name on there or love you or whatever when I go to use this tag. This is where I realize, okay, that's not drying. <laughs> There's an excess amount of glaze here. So I just wiped it off and it was it's still like very well sealed. I love this stuff. All right, so I'm going to glue this other half of the doily right here. And then I decide to bring in some washi tape 
that kind of matches the front. Again, trying to tie everything together and make this one unified piece. Even though I typically think of the front and back, you know, individually in design, I do try to make them cohesive. All right, so then I do decide I'm going to glue this down as well. And put in my sari silk. Again, glass mat, amazing. <laughs> I don't know how I would craft without it. I had a cutting mat for a couple of years before I had this, and this really is the best. The best for me. All right, so there it is. Now, I realize that this is, you know, maybe like less of a mixed media, which is what Somerset Studios is more kind of about. This is more the card making version of those tags. But, you know, I think when I look to that magazine or anything else for inspiration, you know, it's it's just inspiration and it's not creativity creativity is left up to you so you know it's a jumping off point and you can make things your own so I have to bring in these bows <laughs> I just can't help myself so I'm gonna have to fussy cut this out now I have a ton of these already cut because I have a brother scan and cut and I'll do a bunch of digital printables and then I'll cut them out kind of just like, you know, spend an hour doing a bunch of stuff on my scan and cut and then put it back in the craft closet basically. But I didn't have them right at my fingertips. So I decided to just cut one, you know, these for this video. I do want to organize my ephemera. I already have folders to put them in and I really need to do that time is the problem there's not enough of it so I emboss this piece of paper with a Tim Holtz embossing folder and I this is kind of my clean and simple tag so I have a really kind of elegant one I have a modern one and then this is going to be like my clean and simple version of a tag I had this piece of scrap cork paper and I really wanted to use it even though it wasn't quite long enough or wide enough um, I it just forced me to be more creative in how I would use it because it was definitely going on the card so here I'm just using leftover ink so it's not really bold or anything so I'm playing around this and I'm like all right what am I going to do to fill in the gap at the top And on my table, I had some crepe paper. And I love adding like crepe paper to my cards. And I like adding just all kinds of stuff, fabric, whatever. So I thought this one went and was nice. It just kind of reminds me of the sea breeze. So. I decide that this is the remedy I need. And I'm going to use my ATG to adhere it down. Now this is the same one you've heard me talk about previously. I'm going to make it through all this tape and I'm sure the next batch will be much better. <laughs> now you can see here that this stuff can be brittle so be careful when you're gluing it. Um, I was really careful for the remainder of the card. Um, and I wanted to show you, you can hole punch that just like paper. But I was really careful for this portion because I didn't want to tear any more of the cork. All right. And like, it's that easy, really. So I had a little excess tape there. Get that off. I'm trying to think of the back. And that paper was just too busy and that was a lawn fawn paper so I'll go back to my bows 
and uh, yeah this turquoise one is a winner so then I fussy cut that one out and you're so lucky you don't have to fussy cut it or really I, I thought I edited it out <laughs> I didn't think you were gonna have to watch me fussy cut it but I guess you do but these are really easy it's not a problem nice clean edges and then I pop this up with foam tape too you know one of the fun things about tags versus cards is you can put as much dimension on a tag as you want to maybe I should do that maybe I should do like a dimensional tag challenge to see how much dimension I can add on a tag uh, without it looking ridiculous I guess if you're interested in that let me know in the comments below and I'll do that okay I liked this placement on the side with that I might go back and add that but I had left it off because again this is supposed to be clean and simple <laughs> All right, adding some more sari silk. That's the name of the game. And my three tags are done. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I really enjoy making tags and I, you know, do enjoy this magazine, even though this issue doesn't get very many thumbs up for me. Um, but I know a lot of creative, creative people are involved and for that, I'm grateful. All right, thanks for watching. Thanks for spending 22 minutes with me if you made it all the way to the end. All right, subscribe, like, do all those kind little YouTube things. Bye.